Well, hey guys, today's experiment is to build a completely discrete audio amplifier on a breadboard. And this is not complete, I'm kind of starting out here. I'll use the output stage with some modifications from the, from the other videos. This is the circuit I come up with. This is my design, though I've used elements of the design from couple of audio amplifier design books. One's from Doug Self, the other is uh, Bob Cordell. A very good books. You know, they're like 700 pages. They just go from beginning to end and you know, show you how to build a high performance audio amplifier. You know, they just want minimal distortion, a stable amplifier that you know, colors the sound minimally. Now, some people are kind of against high performance, meaning they want some harmonics in their signal or their sound. But the definition of high fidelity, you know, fidelity, you want to reproduce the signal, the audio signal, without any coloration whatsoever. So that's kind of what hi-fi means to me. So minimal damage to the sound is what I'd want. And that's what their design approaches are. And, you know, if you go through those books, you're not going to find this circuit. This is kind of my design, but it uses elements of, you know, their recommendations for making a high-performance um, amplifier though I didn't use everything here. And let's take a quick look at the schematic. Now this is your differential input stage. And some of the things to improve the performance is to have degeneration resistors. You look at older amplifiers, a lot of times they didn't use those. But having them there is like a mag order of magnitude better distortion performance. And I'm also using a current mirror. That's just a uh, current source. Another thing they recommend is a uh, Darlington type voltage gain stage. This is the uh, uh, Class A voltage amplifier. I kind of split these up a little bit to simplify the layout of the amplifier. So this is the input stage, this is the voltage amplification stage and bias in the output stage. So having a Darlington um, type set up in the voltage amplification stage is recommended. And the output stage not really using the recommendations. They, they do have the Darlington output stage set up like this set of connecting two resistors here on each side to the output they just go direct from the driver emitter to the other driver emitter like that then there's a speed up capacitor it's all about how Darlington circuits work I won't get much into that but they they recommend using output triples and things. That just means there's a pre-driver. When you do that, it means there's more gain here, current gain. And this stage has to is let I should say this stage is less stressed by drive. It doesn't need to have as much current to drive this stage, which means less distortion. So yeah, that's just a a small tidbit of things they recommend. So I'm going to attempt to get this working. Uh, some of these thing values I put in, you know, I kind of estimated, and they do not work right. This is a circuit. I'm not getting good performance yet, so I, I'm going to have to adjust these around here. And uh, yeah, it's going to take some tinkering to get it to work. And here's an, another circuit I designed. This is a symmetrical type amplifier. It has two 
uh, differential input stages and a stabilized current mirror. Now, although these seem like the best idea for an amplifier, but if you don't get these matched very well, it just could make distortion worse. So having these input stages balanced uh, perfectly well as perfect as you can get it can reduce reduce the distortion and there's no uh, current source because each stage drives a uh, amplifier in the voltage gain stage you have the upper and the lower now you know see this one's driven off of this one this one's driven off of this one and that's just the bias circuit and there's the snicker come up here <laughs> oh, snickers I think it's getting close to feeding time um, snickers <laughs> it's really it's hard for me to explain the circuit when you're standing on it but anyway I'm using the output triple design here so you have a pre-driver, a driver, and then the output transistors. I am using um, paralleled output transistors for two reasons. Of course, the typical problem with transistors are beta droop with higher current. You know, the more current you draw through a transistor, the lower the transistor's current gain, or beta. So having two there help reduce that, lowering distortion, plus it helps to drive difficult loads. So this amplifier here would be rated at 100 to 125 watts into 8 ohms depending on your power supply voltage. And using the lower power supply voltage you can probably get around I don't know maybe 180 watts into 4 ohm loads. And of course uh, nothing's set here. Some values need to be determined and probably going to need a lot of tweaks to these circuits. One thing both these circuits do not have is current limit. And uh, a finished amp would require a couple more transistors and a couple diodes and some resistors for a current limit circuit. And this thing has total with the uh, current limit would probably be like 27 transistors I think so there's a lot of parts in it but really when you look at it it's so straightforward and basic um, you just break it down into its parts you know just differential amp with current mirror on both sides and then you got current sources Darlington class A driver now it puts or a voltage gain stage um, bias spreader and just your Darlington output. I mean, it's when you break it down, it's it's pretty simple stuff, really. It's just getting everything figured out to make it actually work. Well, I've been babbling on for several minutes now. It's time to uh, see if I can get this circuit going. Okay, this mess is all hooked up. Boy, I'm so great. I designed an amplifier, and it doesn't even work. Let me turn on the function generator. The scope is hooked to the output. Signal is on. Hmm. <laughs> Nothing. That thing's dead as a door now. <clears throat> turn off the power supply. Ooh, look at that. Well, when I measured the output, I'm getting a full output rail, or a supply rail, on the output of the amplifier. <clears throat> In the positive direction, I'm getting like 14 volts on the output. That means something's pulling it up to this rail. So either something's conducting too much here, 
or th this circuit's dead and it's not you know it's not pulling current through here to you know even things out so yeah uh, what the heck is the problem with this stupid thing okay now I'm getting somewhere I have forgotten to connect this wire to this part of the circuit so I started looking at this circuit making sure it was all connected correctly and I noticed that wire wasn't there and that is this yellow wire right here so now when I turn it on aha now we're getting somewhere that's funny weird clipping on the bottom there have to look at that but yeah it's actually uh, working now Hmm. Let's hook up a load. Right now there's no load. And uh, see what it looks like. Here's the FFT, the blue line. No real distortion, just noise. And actually a lot of that noise is just the limited resolution of the scope. I did record a uh, signal with a built-in harmonic and uh, I want to take a look at that I was kind of interested in what the scope can actually see as far as uh, the percentage and uh, let me play that signal here so what I did in the software called Audacity I made a fundamental one kilohertz tone and then I added a a one percent tone to that at three kilohertz so it's like the first odd harmonic let's see if I can stretch it out there so you can see it and there it is let me turn that there you can see it better so there you can see it spiking up so if I stop that and go back to the waveform, the clean one, there it is. So you're not really getting much. Might be a l small amount of distortion. But stop that I said stop okay and go back to the one percent so yeah we can clearly see one percent distortion so I also made one at 0.5 percent yeah you can kind of see 0.5 and here is point one percent can't really see that one so yeah the FFT function on these scopes these cheap little scopes can let you see down under a percent of distortion at least in the audio range but not really good for you know checking for hi-fi I mainly use it just for viewing if I'm you know getting any clipping distortion of course under 0.5 percent should be plenty well enough to sound clean though I wouldn't consider it hi-fi so the amplifier itself is not really adding anything that I can show to the signal on that scope anyway okay let's do a listening test of the spaghetti mess have the uh, music player connected and here we go
open loop gain. Well, that's this circuit here. It seems to work okay. Not real stable though. I mean, got this high impedance amplifier with wires all over the place. It's uh, just going <clears> to <throat> not be too stable. Really has to be put on its own board. But it seems to work okay. How much power can you get out of this thing? Well, properly set up, whatever your supply voltage is, if you use the right transistors, you can make a 100 watt 8 ohm amplifier. No problem. Probably would have to tweak some values of the resistors to get the currents right. I'm not going to force this thing for more power because uh, you know it's instability of the circuit you know with these wires running all over uh, it's not going to be good it might pop something so no sense in doing that well that wraps up this edition pretty interesting little circuit and we'll have more on the way thanks for watching